from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the news at 10, live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Bimbo Oloide. Hello and welcome. Tonight, military intensifies fight against terrorism, foils another attack on communities at the Chad border by Boko Haram members. Retired General Aliyu Gusso resumes as new defense minister, says insurgency challenge will be surmounted. Gender equality takes center stage at a forum in Abuja. Participants seek quick passage of bills on women's rights by National Assembly. And Ukraine's interim prime minister denounces Crimea's referendum on joining Russia says international community will not accept decision. On business news tonight, Nigeria's economy is forecast to grow by 7.3% in 2014 by the International Monetary Fund. Uh, sports news, the league management company weeds out two clubs from the Nigeria Premier League for failing to meet the minimum registration standards. And I'm Linda Akibe from Abuja. Federal government restates its resolve to attaining universal health coverage in the country. The military says it has once again foiled an attempted attack by terrorists on markets and communities on the outskirts of the Mongono and NNPC at New Mate. Borno State, Northeast Nigeria. In a statement signed by the defense spokesman, Major General Chris Olukolade, the military also revealed that it has been receiving useful information from captured terrorists as to their mode of operation. The military also revealed that among those in its custody is a man who specializes in butchering human beings with daggers and cutlasses, adding that more assaults and encounters are continuing in other identified locations as intelligence sources confirm the routes being used by the fleeing terrorists. Just yesterday, the defense headquarters claimed it foiled an attempt by the insurgents to attack Ajiri and Mafa, as well as other communities in the outskirts of the Borno state capital, Meduguri, and Dikwa, also in the state. Meanwhile, the new Minister of Defense, retired General Aliyu Gusso, has said that the challenge of the insurgency in the north will be overcome. The one-time National Security Advisor, who was speaking while taking over as the new Minister of Defense, called for closer collaboration among security agencies. Also at the event, the Minister of Information, Mr. Labaran Maku, who served as the supervising Minister of Defense for five months, explained that the Nigerian military has put a lot of pressure on the Boko Haram insurgency, which resulted in the recent spate of attacks by the insurgents. I'm aware that in the last three or four weeks, there's been a lot of pressure on the terrorists because the armed forces have been going directly to their bases, and that is why we're seeing a lot of those sporadic attacks which come sometimes out of frustration or anger. But I know so much is going on, and it's not something that we, we will talk on the pages of newspapers. But I commend the armed forces for facing the challenges head on, and we must change the story as quickly as we can, uh, because it's crucial for this country. I must also emphasize that a lot of the elements have been coming across the boundaries and we've had the occasions to discuss that very frankly, uh, and we believe that Nigeria is also in touch with our neighbors to contain the situation. But we have challenges beyond the Northeast. Unfortunately, Nigeria has, uh, over the years, um, not been able to tackle the question of groups uh, operating outside the state and causing a lot of havoc. I must say, Your Excellency, that in several parts of the country, particularly in the north, we have uh, a communal crisis, crisis between grazers and farmers. 
which have also been penetrated by all sorts of elements that are using it as an opportunity for criminality. The challenges are evidently daunting, but surmountable. With the help of Almighty Allah, in our collective resolve and determination, we will get to the destination that Nigerians, that will give Nigerians the confidence that the country is indeed a safe place for everyone. We must all be prepared to be committed to our duties and the purpose in our hearts to take quality and the productive steps each time we move. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has denied bail to Dr. Mohamed Yunus, a lecturer at the Kogi State University, accused of being the spiritual leader of a Boko Haram cell in the state. Ruling on the bail application, Justice Gabriel Kolawole said it would not be in the interest of justice to release the accused person at this stage of his trial. He cited the wanton and mindless killing of innocent people, especially the recent massacre of students of the federal government college, Buniyadi Yobe State, saying he was mindful of the need to exercise his discretionary powers to refuse bail to the accused persons. Dr. Yunis, who had been in the custody of the Directorate of State Service since 2013, was last month transferred to Kuje Prison, Abuja, on the orders of the High Court. Also denied bail were Salami Abdullahi and Umar Musa, both of whom were accused of belonging to the Boko Haram sect. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to celebrate the International Women's Day tomorrow, the Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Mrs. Zainab Mena, has appealed for the passage of pending bills that seek to protect the rights of women. Mrs. Mena, who made the appeal at an event to mark the day in Abuja, the nation's capital, listed poor institutional capacities and lack of sectoral synergy in the implementation of the national gender policy as factors that should be addressed urgently. Nigerian women at a gathering to push for gender mainstreaming in all spheres of life. The Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Mrs. Zainab Mena, believes that a major step towards achieving the vision of ensuring gender equality begins with the enactment of laws that would protect women. Several interventions are still needed in achieving the targets of gender equality and women empowerment. LDG 3, reducing infant mortality, LDG, LDG 4, and environmental sus sustainability, and LDG 7. It is unlikely that the relevant LDG targets will be made given the various challenges and obstacles that are intending the, uh, impeding the achievements of the goals except they are urgently at risk. Some of these challenges include the following. One, poor funding of gender equality and women empowerment initiatives. Three, non legislation of 35 gender percent gender affirmative action. Three, passage of impending, uh, all pending gender friendly bills. Next on the line after legislations, according to other speakers at this event, is the economic empowerment of women. While women make up to 60 to 79 percent of the rural population, they own smaller farmlands than men. Women all over the world are faced with societal realities that threaten to limit their achievements and prevent them from attaining their economic potential. But many of the realities that women face, there is perhaps none as disenfranchising as economic disempowerment poor access to finance, not having an enabling environment to enable women realize their potential. As the debate for the protection of women's rights continues to take center stage at major fora, many say deliberations at this meeting might be just another talk shop if government does not take action to protect the rights of women. In part two after the break, House Committee frowns on manner of implementation of Procurement Act by MDAs. That's in a moment. Do stay with us.